Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and my co-host this week has been John Troyer. This is SiliconANGLE Media's production of the Cube, worldwide leader in live tech coverage, and this has been OpenStack Summit. 2017 in Boston, Massachusetts. John, we came in with a lot of questions. Uh, one of my premises uh, coming into the event uh, was that we, we needed to kind of reset expectations a little bit. Um, I know I learned a lot this week. Uh, still one of the you know my favorite communities. Uh, a lot of really smart people. Really interesting things going on. Uh, and you know, open source infrastructure is really the focus here. Uh, start with you, kind of you know big meta takeaways from the show so far? Well, big picture, my first summit My first summit here. I uh, didn't quite know what to expect. I love the community, a lot of activity, a lot of real world activity going on. Uh, people building clouds today. So that was very insightful and very, uh, you know, that's a great data point. Uh, as far as the ecosystem goes, a lot more talk about um, integrating with the rest of the open, open source ecosystem, about integrating with other public and private clouds. So I thought that there was also a lot of self-awareness here about where OpenStack is on its journey and uh, you know how it might proceed into the future. So overall, I think uh, you know a really practical, focused, and grounded week. Yeah, um, came in, like, right, was the, the, the whole concept of a big tent, uh, I, I think as we said, there's, there's a big hole poked in that. Uh, you know, there's the core, is doing well. There's a number of projects. I forget the user survey whether you know there's the kind of the six core uh, pieces, and then there's like you know nine or ten in the average configuration. Uh, so there's there's more than the core. There's interesting things uh, going into it. And last year, I felt that OpenStack uh, kind of understood where it fit into that hybrid cloud environment. As, as you pointed out, this year some of those upper layer things, I, I feel like I understand them a little more. So you know, of course, containers and Kubernetes, uh, a big piece of the discussion uh, the, this week. Uh, you know, containers definitely transforming the way you know we build our applications. Uh, it seems a given now that that containers will be a big part of the future, and OpenStack's ready for it. Uh, we had uh, yesterday, uh, we we had the people that did the the, the demo uh, in the keynote, but uh, you know, containers doing well. Uh, Kubernetes fits in pretty well, uh, even though I, I think it was Randy Bias that said, well, you know, OpenStack needs Kubernetes. Uh, you know, my paraphrase is Kubernetes doesn't need OpenStack. Uh, KubeCon, uh, you know, is going to be in Austin at the end of the year, and that show could be bigger than this show was uh, it, here in Boston. Uh, year over year for the North American show, uh, attendance is down a little bit, but still robust attendance, lots of different pieces. Uh, containers, Kubernetes, you, you mentioned some of the other pieces. Any sure. other add-ons on that? Well, no, I mean, other than it's, it's, it's worth saying that these are not either or. These are, this is all and. If you look at the total addressable market, every place that uh, containers and Kubernetes can play, that's every cloud in the world, right? It's up, it's up there at the application layer. If you look at where OpenStack belongs, yeah, it is in these uh, private clouds that have special needs, that have sp either from privacy, security, or functionality, latency, uh, you know, uh, just uh, data gravity, right? There's all these reasons why you might want to build out a public cloud. Uh, and we see that with uh, with Telco, right? Telecom is building out their own infrastructure because they need it because they run the network core. So that's not going away. If, as far as containers go, I, again, the story was, was not either or, it's and. You can containerize the infrastructure. That's super useful. Sometimes being bare metal is useful. Separately, you can put containers on top because that's increasingly becoming the application packaging and interface format. So I didn't see a lot of ideology here, Stu, and that was refreshing to me. People were not saying there is one true way. Uh, this is a modular system that at this point in its life cycle it has to become very pragmatic. John, I think that's a, that's a great point because uh, we knock on, and everybody knocks on, OpenStack's not simple. And the reason is, is because IT is not simple. Everybody has different challenges, therefore it's not a Lego brick, it's lots of ways we put it together. Uh, had some really interesting you know, deep dives with a customer, a couple of users today. Uh, the Adobe Advertising Cloud, uh, uh, Patty Power Betfair, both of those gave us real concrete examples of 
you know, how and why they build things the way they do, how OpenStack and Kubernetes go together, how like acquiring another company or switching your storage vendors is made easier uh, by OpenStack. So, you know, we've talked to a number of practitioners. Uh, they like OpenStack. Uh, it reminds me of like VMware. People like being able to build it and tweak it. Uh, very different scale for some of these environments, but people are building clouds, the telecoms are doing some good things, uh, all the Linux companies are super excited uh, about the, the, the future that it helps them kind of move up the stack and become more critical environments and you know how it all ties into this you know multi hybrid cloud world, you know digital transformation, uh, you know many of these pieces, you know I need that modern infrastructure and the open infrastructure coming from OpenStack and related uh, pieces pull it all together. Well, where is the innovation going to come from in this next generation of cloud? Uh, I thought our, our segment with, with Oram talking about the Massachusetts open, cl uh, open Cloud was great because he's there as a computer science professor, somebody who's been intimately involved with virtualization with, with IBM, with VMware, uh, saying, okay, we need, to, we need to build this next generation. Where can we innovate? We have to, we have to own the stack, and OpenStack is a great way for us to, to innovate with, that, with those different components. One of the challenges, because OpenStack as a set of technologies is so modular, is how do, where do the where's the knowledge come from? Where's the knowledge transfer? Can you find an OpenStack expert? Do you have to grow them? So I see that as one challenge going forward for the OpenStack community is how do we grow the knowledge base? How do we make sure that uh, people are trained up and able to architect and operate OpenStack-based clouds? Yeah, John, how about the individuals themselves? We, we talked to Lisa Marie Namphy uh, about the Ambassadors Program. Uh, we talked to a number of our guests th throughout the week uh, about you know training everything from Oren Krieger, talking about how his students are helping to build this, uh, to you know engagement, contribution. Uh, I mean, it, it's nuanced. When I, I look at the future of jobs, uh, a lot of companies here are hiring, which is always you know heartening to me. Uh, what, what, what's your take on that aspect? Well, it's, it's still a very vibrant community. You look at these different camps, uh, a lot of them are vendor affiliated these days. There are very few, there are very few communities that are, that are outside of, 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 of a vendor, and these open source foundations are one source of those. Uh, I think, um, look, there's still five or 6,000 people here, right? This is not a, this is not a small event, mm. uh, and these people are active, hands-on, operators for the most part. So yeah, and, and the thing I, I point out, there are lots of companies that have contributors here. The other category is still really big here. Uh, Point Lisa Marie made many of the people that have contributed here have switched jobs a number of times. Uh, you know, NASA helped start it. Uh, they kind of left. They 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 came back. Uh, some of the big telecommunication. Uh, telecom, telecom companies, uh, they're not selling OpenStack, they're using it to help build their services, so it's like, wait, you know, which are vendors, uh, which are, uh, you know, providers? Uh, I think we know everybody's becoming a software company. Uh, you know, wait, John, Tech Reckoning, are you a software company yet? Uh, we use a lot of soft, we use a lot of cloud, mostly yeah. on SaaS side. Yeah, yeah, uh, SiliconANGLE Media, we actually have a part of our business that, that is software, we've got a, a full development team, you know, open source plays into, you know, some of what we do, but I, I guess what I'm saying is like, the, tr the traditional demarcation uh, between the vendor uh, and the consumer in open source tends to be blurring. Uh, I, I don't remember in the keynote if they had, you know, hey, how many people have contributed uh, to the code? That's something we, we used to get, partially because we have splintered out uh, the, the, this, this event a little uh, as to, you know, the, 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 the goals. It's no longer the people building it. They've got lots of ways to do that. Uh, and a lot of the drama's gone. We had for many years in OpenStack, it was, you know, who's going to own what distribution and who's driving what project, uh, and a lot of that's come out. Uh, we we, we t talked about for the last couple of years, has it become boring in certain ways, uh, but uh, it's important, uh, it's driving a lot of pieces, and, uh, you know, uh, OpenStack should be here to stay for a while. Yeah, it's part of the conversation. I love the term open infrastructure. We heard it once or twice. We'll see if that becomes a, a topic of conversation. You know, going back to at least Marie Amphi, uh, segment, I encourage people to check out your local OpenStack meetup, right? You'll find that other conversations are going on there other than just OpenStack. This is this is an ecosystem. It interacts with the rest of the world. Yeah, and talk about that next generation. You know, Edge is really interesting. The, the conversation we had with Beth Cohen. Uh, also talked to Lee Doyle from, from the analyst perspective. Uh, lots of cool things happening with that next generation of technology. 5G is going to play into it. Uh, so th there's there's always the, the next, next thing. Uh, and OpenStack's doing a good, good job to, uh, as a community, to be open, 
working with it, and understanding that they know, don't need to be all things to all people. S certain other pieces will pull in, uh, and uh, we, we have that broad, diverse ecosystem. Look, so I'll go out and make a prediction. I think in, in five years we're going to look back and we're going to say, actually, OpenStack-driven plumbing is going to be driving a lot of the next generation of the Internet. Yeah, I, I love that. I actually, I forget if it was two or three years ago, what I said was that as Linux took a long time to kind of work its way into all the environments, OpenStack pieces will find its way there. Brian Stevens from Google said, you know, if it wasn't for open source, in general, Linux specifically, we wouldn't have any of the hyperscale guys today. Uh, and, you know, all those companies leverage open source a bunch. Uh, you know, we've heard whisperings that, you know, not just the telecommunications, some very large global companies that are trying to figure out how OpenStack fit into it. Coming into the show, it was all the talk about, oh, Intel stopped its joint lab with Rackspace, uh, you know, HPE pulled its cloud out. Uh, there's some other, you know, hyperscale companies that are looking at OpenStack it's reached a certain maturity and it will fit in a number of places. All right, well, hey, John, we started at the beginning of the week. It was cloudy and overcast, a little cool in Boston. The, the, the skies open up, it's blue. I've loved having you know two weeks here in Boston. Really appreciate you uh, joining me for the journey here, uh, here, here for the, the, the OpenStack Summit. Thanks for having me, it was fascinating. Th th thank you, John. I uh, want to thank our audience and, and thank the whole team here in Boston and, and the broad Silicon Angle media team. Uh, this is our biggest week uh, that we've ever had as to how much content we're creating. Uh, so thanks so much to everyone. Uh, thanks for our community for watching. Uh, as anything when they scale, uh, you know, let us know if there's things we need to fix or feedback uh, that you have for us. Uh, for Stu Miniman, John Troyer, the whole team here here in Boston and beyond, I uh, want to thank you so much for watching theCUBE. Be sure to check out SiliconANGLE TV for all the upcoming events. Let us know where should we should be at and feel free to reach back, reach to us with any comments. And thank you for watching theCUBE.